I'd like to welcome everybody to our 16th Art Forum for Instagram Artists. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with why we do this, and uh, I don't need to say much about that. But So um, I'd just like to introduce Chris Brandel uh, for offering to do this. I think I've been after her for over a year to do it. Probably. At times I thought she was avoiding me, but I she finally agreed to do it. And I'm really happy because I love her work. So anyway, I'm just going to turn it over to Chris at this point. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks so much for having me. And um, thank you, everybody who's here to watch. I am really thrilled that you uh, wanted to spend a little bit of your day with me. Um, you know, just uh, to get started, because we're such a small group, it, and because I, like many people, don't love to just sort of give a speech, if you will, um, if there are things that uh, you think of as I'm talking, just interrupt and throw out you know, a question or uh, words because interacting is much better and much easier and always much more fun. So I know we'll do some specific Q&A at the end, but I don't want you to lose a thought if you have one um, while we're talking. Um, so first, uh, I'm Chris Brandell and thank you all for joining. And um, I will give you a little uh, bit about what I want to talk about. I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about me. Um, uh, we'll go through some pieces in my body of work that are meaningful and, and hopefully you find interesting. Um, and then uh, kind of talk a little bit around studio business, um, galleries, things like that. And then we'll turn it back over to Alan for Q&A. Um, and hopefully we'll get through all of that and, and it will be more than five minutes worth of time. So... Um, so who am I? Uh, I am a 59 year old, just turned 59 at the end of last month, um, artist. I am, uh, primarily and what I would consider, I call myself an abstract minimalist, um, which really isn't anything, but it's the name I've made up for what I do. And, um, uh, I'm an oil painter primarily, but I use lots of media and I'll talk about that in a little while. Um, I've been painting really since I was 12 years old, I guess. And I knew from the beginning that I was always supposed to be a painter. Um, unfortunately, the people, or maybe fortunately, um, the people in my life just thought that that was probably not uh, the best career choice. So many people, I'm sure you all have had experiences with this, you know, think that, you know, art is not the way to, to live a life. So um, like many people, I pursued a different career. Um, I was in business uh, for 20 years. And um, that whole time I was in business, I really had two careers. I was, you know, working 40, 50 hours a week in business and then working 20, 30 hours a week in art. And hating every day of my business life um, and loving every day of my art life and somehow making all that work. It's probably why I'm 59 and still single because there wasn't any time for anything else in my life except two careers going on. Um, fortunately though, um, in 2019, um, I was in business with a, a woman who was um, a little bit younger than me and she and I decided that we, um, actually earlier than 2019, we had decided that we wanted to sell the business. She wanted to raise her family. And I really, really just wanted to be in art full time. Uh, so we were fortunate enough to decide to sell our business, which we did. And I was able from that point, over, from that point forward in 2019 to be a full time artist. Um, it was probably about 2012 where I actually had my first breakthrough as a professional artist. I had been doing a lot of little shows, local shows. Um, so you're familiar with the Torpedo Factory, of course, doing a lot of little things over there. Um, and I had a um, opportunity to uh, put my work in to a group show. I, I applied to be in a group show and the woman who was the curator for the group show at the time in 2012 was one of the assistant directors of the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. And she chose 300 paintings for the group show, all of which uh, had very visible references to portraiture in them, with the exception of four paintings, um, one of which was mine, which was abstract, and obviously not about people. And so 
that was the moment where um, having then gone to the show, uh, spent some time talking with her, that I really began to consider my career as a professional artist versus sort of doing it on the side and kind of here and there and very informally up until that point. So 2012 really was the, the point at which I jumped into the art business world pretty strongly. Um, I feel very, very lucky. I've been, uh, I've had an extraordinary amount of success and um, I'm, I'm very grateful for that and for that opportunity because I really think if I had not had that particular show that day, I might still just be painting what I love, but not really um, able to make a career out of it. So, um, so I was grateful for that. Um, the last couple of years, uh, since 2012, uh, I've had quite a few shows, a number of solo shows, a number of group exhibits, um, and sold a lot of work. And that has really allowed me to move my art career forward and continue to do and pursue really what I love about painting. Um, I've matured quite a bit over that time and really settled into who I think I am as an artist. And it took a long time to get there. Um, you know, sort of like when you begin your artistry and kind of have to figure out what your art style is, whether you're a sculptor, a painter, a photographer, you know, whatever it is that your art uh, style, what your art medium is, you have to figure out sort of what your, your style is. It's, it's that same, it was that same way for me, of course, in the beginning um, of my art career. And, and even more so over the last couple of years, as I transitioned out of a business world and really became um, very focused on being a full-time artist and trying to learn a lot more deeply about who I was and what it was that I was creating and what did it mean and all of that. So, um, so I really, I think I really have come into my own since I started painting, uh, since 2012 and more so since I started painting full time and have been really dedicated just to that one vision and, and without really many distractions. Um, so now, uh, in, uh, I started building a home a couple of years ago in Florida. Um, I was living in the Washington DC area, uh, and, um, and I'd been living there for a long time. Painting, I had I rented a studio for a time and then I had a studio in my house as well. And um, finally uh, was able to leave Virginia. I moved to Florida in last December. So I've been here almost a year, um, but uh, moved into a temporary space. Um, I actually spent the last eight or nine months painting in the garage. Um, I sort of think you can paint anywhere as long as you, as you, as long as you paint or you know pursue your art anywhere you want, as long as you do it. So uh, I've been in the garage over in a condo building and uh, that was fine. Um, but now just uh, last week, in fact, when Alan and I set this time, I thought I would have been at this house already for about a month, but that didn't happen. I just last week moved into my new home. Um, and uh, as I said to Alan and Peter before everybody joined the call, um, you all are the very first people other than the moving people to see my studio. Um, and moreover, you are probably the only people who will ever see it without paint everywhere. So um, I'm showing you the nice view, but really uh, it's a big empty space right now that will be covered with a lot of paint very soon. So, and there's a couple of paintings in there too. So I'm really fortunate. I have about 600 square feet. Um, it goes all the way around uh, and that beautiful view to inspire me, which is really nice. So I really built this house for that studio. So I'm really excited about painting here. And I think uh, there'll be a, a whole new transition, likely in my work, um, uh, as well as uh, just in my life and getting into this new studio and being able to paint here full time. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so let me talk a little bit about my process overall. Um, uh, you know, if you if you know anything about my work, I, I paint in these series of things like metal and wire and words and concrete and stone. And it's interesting because on Instagram, a lot of people, of course, think that um, I'm actually using those materials. I'll, people will say to me, "Wow, what kind of wire are you using on your canvas?" You know, and 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 it's a great it's a great question. And I realize I confuse a lot of people with that, right? But but what it is is that um, I'm very inspired by these. Um, things that I call found objects. And uh, it's um, it's things that I'll be, you know, I'll be taking a walk along the way and I'll look down. I think that, you know, artists have a way of seeing that maybe people who aren't in art don't actually do. And that is that we, 
whatever it is that we're focused in, in our art world, um, we have a way of seeing um, very interesting things in our lives. Uh, uh, and in my case, uh, what I see is these random sort of um, things, whether it's uh, some scrap wire on the ground, it's an interesting way a galvanized fence has been twisted. It's um, a stone that's got some paint on it, you know, that's laying there. And it and it has become such a thing for me to see these pieces and grab them and take them home. My friends actually tease me about it. I'll be like, wait, stop the car. I have to get out. I see something I want to grab, you know, and people laugh at me about it. Um, but I'll just, you know, I'll be driving along or, or I'll be walking along and I'll see something. And, and that thing, I have to see it. I have to have it. Sometimes I can only take a picture of it, actually. But but a lot of times I'm able to actually take it with me. And that's what really inspires me. And what is it about it that inspires me? You know, it's a number of things. It's the energy of the object itself, Um probably first and foremost, and that's what I carry with me. But it may also be its color and its texture, um, or in the case of wire, which I'm really fond of wire, all kinds of wire, because it has this kind of uncontrollable way that it moves and shifts and each piece sort of has a life and an energy all its own. So so these are the you know things that I call found objects and um, I collect them and I have a big box full of them that I actually moved from Virginia all the way to Florida. Um, and I and I paint about them. Um, sometimes they're out in my studio, sometimes they're not, um, but they're the things that really drive my work. And I don't really know which came first, whether it was my palette or the found objects, but somewhere along the way, those two things guided me to the color palette that I use in my work. And it wasn't always in these kind of neutrals that I that you, that I have in my work that you'll see in a few minutes. Um, my palette is extremely neutral and black and white, but I wasn't always there. You know, I used to use more color and now I really can't. I can't, it's really hard for me to paint in with any serious colors, blue and red and green are just tough for me um, because it's not connected to what I'm inspired to, I think, ultimately. Uh, so, you know, that's the, that's sort of the thing, the baseline uh, of what my inspiration is about. But but really, you know, I don't I don't come to a painting and say, well, today I want to paint about the wire, you know, um, uh, first of all, probably like many of you, my painting process is thoroughly intuitive. So um, now that doesn't mean I don't get stuck thinking. I absolutely do. In fact, it's really hard for me to sometimes shut down my mind. I have to sort of be forced. I have to think to be intuitive, right? You know, I have to sort of force myself into a space where, where I'm not thinking about what I'm doing and I'm just stepping up to the canvas and painting. Um, so I'm not usually thinking, oh, today I'm going to paint about wire. But uh, the wire will be in my studio or I will have seen it recently. Um, and and I'll walk into the studio and I have the energy of that and I feel it and it'll start and I'll make a mark on the canvas, um, which I'll tell you sort of how I get to that place in a minute, but I'll make a mark on the canvas and I'll say, oh, you know, here we go. I'm painting about wire today, you know, and it just kind of comes together. It's it's not even as conscious as sort of what I'm describing it to you, but there's sort of no better, no easier way to describe it. It's just a kind of unconscious connection to the things that inspire me. And, and it just happens. And when I'm in that flow state, it really is the best painting that I do. And it's not always that way. I have many days of struggle, but, um, uh, I keep I keep at it, and when I'm able to get into that flow state, I really find that it's a good experience. Um, so if I the process, the actual process I have at the canvas is um, uh, well, first I guess let me talk a little bit about the medium. So uh, ultimately, I paint in oil. I consider myself an oil painter. I love oil paint because it is so silky and smooth and wonderful. It has obvious challenges. It takes a long time to dry. It can be, you know, really challenging to work with. But part of that is what I love about it also. And and it forces me into not uh, doing something very fast. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I also use a tremendous amount of gesso. I use gesso like paint. I not only gesso my canvas, obviously, um, to make it stable for painting, particularly with oil, but I use gesso as a paint and in the layers of the work uh, as I go along. And I don't think a lot about 
fat over lean, which traditional um, a traditional oil artists think about. I don't really think a lot about the materials too much. I just use them based on how I'm feeling and how I'm inspired in the room. I almost always lay down gesso first. Sometimes I lay down some acrylic, a paint, um, depending on what I'm in the mood for. Um, but then, then I'll switch over to the oil and use uh, um, crayons and graphite and all kinds of things to make marks, depending on where I am in that process. Um, I primarily paint very large work. Uh, I love a big canvas. The bigger, the better. Um, I'm just getting ready. Uh, probably the first piece I paint in this new studio will be an eight foot by eight foot square. Um, a commission for somebody. And um, I will love that. I love to paint big. Uh, in fact, really, I've gotten pretty much away from painting small work other than paper pieces. I do a lot with the 16 by 20 paper. Um, uh, and that's very freeing to me. And I'll talk about that in a minute when we when we talk about that. But uh, I do love painting on canvas. Um, board is really nice too, but I'm uh, only about 110 pounds. And so I can't lift a lot of panels very well. So I stick with my canvas because it's a lot lighter and I can, I can move it around pretty easily around the studio. Uh, and then paper's great also. Um, always in my studio, I have multiple paintings going on at the same time. Uh, I've, particularly in the case of being an oil painter because things are wet and you have to stop sometimes. I don't want to stop the painting process. So I typically work on three to five pieces at once. And that also keeps me very inspired. And I think it keeps the work moving. Um, and it's good. It, it, you know, if you're, if you're stuck on one, you can move to the next and really, uh, really uh, keep yourself going and keep yourself in a creative space. Um, a lot of times I can be stuck on all five. And then I have to get out of the studio and take a walk and see some things that are different and, you know, get myself away from it. But I try to paint uh, eight hours a day or I try to be in the studio eight hours a day, uh, five days a week. And, you know, if I could paint all eight of those hours, it would be terrific. But um, probably it's more like four to five solid hours of painting and three hours of distraction and other things that are going on. Um, and some of the business of art, too, which which we can talk about. Uh, so anyway, I lay down some gesso, lay down some acrylic sometimes, uh, get in the flow, uh, really make my paint marks. And, um, you know, a painting can be really quick after that. I can finish a painting in the day or I can finish a painting in two months. It's really just going to be depending on where it is. And, you know, the biggest question I get, uh, and maybe some of you get this as well, is how do you know when a work is finished? And the way that I've learned to answer that question is to just tell people that I never know when it's finished, but I always know when it's not. If I, um, if I am not completely in a place of peace and joy about the piece, then I know it is not finished. If it's in me, if I'm still thinking about it, if I'm walking out of the studio and I'm got that little piece of gray paint stuck in my brain that's over here. It's not a finished painting, even if it seems finished to everybody else. Because when I'm finished, I literally can turn the lights off and go out of the studio and I'm super pleased with what's happened. So so I, I don't know how I get to the finished place. I only know when I haven't gotten there yet. And, and that's the way to answer the question. And like I said, some pieces are very fast and some pieces take a long time. It really just depends on um, what's happening and, and likely what's happening with me, right? Because, because I'm so um, attuned to the energy of what I'm painting, I'm also um, bringing that energy uh, into the studio. And it's, I think, and I believe that it's mixing with whatever energy I walk in the studio with. So um, I think, you know, whatever's going on in my mind or in my life is definitely making an impact on, on how I paint. So um, that's why some pieces I think come more quickly than others. Uh, it just depends on the artist because ultimately I am guiding the brush, um, even if I'm being intuitive. So, so I'm involved. Um, you know, one of the things that took me a long time to figure out about my work was what was I actually telling people my work was about other than a rock and a piece of wire, you know, what, what was, what was the meaning of it? You know, how is it meaningful? And, 
and why, um, what does it say visually? I, I love that term. Alan used that with me earlier. And, um, you know, what I feel is that for me, well, first of all, you know, one of the things that I believe is that you have to do what you love and forget all the rest. That's sort of like one of my favorite sayings, do what you love, forget the rest. And so, you know, if I'm painting and doing what I love in the work, then really nothing else matters. And um, it was hard to come to that. And I said, well, what is it that I love about the work ultimately? And it's that the energy of these objects and what I'm recreating or bringing to life or, or the way that I'm telling their story on, on canvas is actually sort of providing me some peace. And I thought, you know, I, I think what I'm what I'm hoping for is that when people come to view my work, um, it elevates their energy in the same way that it elevates mine and that they find a place of peace or a place of joy or whatever it is that they need. It's not for me to sort of dictate what they need. But but what I find when I've got a completed work is that I've, I've got this peaceful, joyous kind of experience. And that's what I hope that I can share with other people. And so, you know, I'm painting about rocks and wire and pavement and those things might seem silly, but, you know, if they can elevate someone's experience, if the sort of simple beauty of those things, the natural kind of essence that those things have and the stories that they tell can help someone elevate their energy to a different place, even if it's not peace and joy, but it's something different for them than where they are, then I feel like that's what the meaning of my work is. And so, you know, that's what I, that's what I've sort of come to is is what it is that I'm painting about. Um, and what I wanna say with my work uh, is that it's simple and that I hope that it elevates people's energy, you know, when they look at it, that they get something from it, that they walk away feeling elevated in some way. Um, so, you know, uh, just to close out that process a little bit, uh, what is my studio day like? Um, I typically, uh, I think I said already, I, I, I try to paint, you know, nine to five, maybe something like that. I really want my studio day to be like a work day. That's probably because I spend so much time working in a business environment. And so I like to come to work to the studio, uh, have a work day and then leave at the end of the day. But I typically come pretty early. I'm an early, early riser, 4.30 ish. And uh, I like to come to the studio, have a cup of coffee while it's dark outside, um, kind of get my mind in a relaxed place and uh, change into some painting clothes or not sometimes, but usually. And then uh, then just start and, and try to start early and finish early. Um, uh, I almost always take a break in the middle of the day at least once and take a walk and try to visually see some different things. Even if I'm having a great day in the studio, I try to make myself leave and come back. Um, I just think it's good for my health and also good for the art uh, to take a little break and, and get away from it. Um, and then I try to leave the studio, you know, at four or five o'clock uh, in the evening and, um, uh, you know, go on and have some life that's not around art if I can. Uh, so that's my day. Um, a lot of times uh, during the day, I'll need to spend some time doing some business stuff. So I'll usually save that for the afternoon. I'm much more intuitive and much more creative in the morning. So I like to paint earlier in the day and um, do the business stuff and the shipping stuff and all of that garbage in the afternoon when I'm more tired and not as, not as creative. So um, I try to do that in those times. Um, I think now, why don't we, uh, unless anybody has any questions, why don't we talk a little bit about the actual body of work for the last 15 minutes or so, and then we'll ask some questions. Um, so Alan, why don't you bring up the metal and wire series since I spent so much time talking about the wire. Yep, I can see it. So what I thought I'd do is just um, show you a couple of the series that are my favorite um, and talk a little bit about them. Um, right now, all of these uh, works on this page, which is my website, um, are from my uh, metal and wire series. There's many, many more. Um, this is probably one of my favorite series. And uh, again, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, because I really, really like the, the, um, the wire. 
so, um, uh, you know, one of this is this is where I, you know, coined my phrase being an abstract minimalist. You know, it's sort of abstract, but it's also can you might call it kind of minimal. Um, uh, the the um, both all three of the raw canvas pieces. I don't actually paint on raw canvas because I paint with oil and oil will rot the raw canvas. So um, just like it will rot a piece of fabric or, you know, paper or anything else. Um, so uh, the raw can, what looks like raw canvas is actually canvas with a clear gesso layer on it or multiple clear gesso layers to protect, protect the oil from the canvas. But um, lately uh, I've really been enjoying uh, that the nature of that raw canvas and working that way. So uh, I'll probably be doing more of that. And on the first piece that you see, wire and word study, as well as the um, fifth piece over, wire and word study one. So that's one and two there. Um, you'll see that I've really uh, mixed in some words with um, the work. And just to maybe explain that a little bit, um, you know, part of that energy that I'm feeling when I'm in the studio and I'm thinking about this piece of wire uh, that's inspiring me or that I'm connected to it in some way, um, I may also have things going on in my brain, um, kind of uh, whether it's songs or whether it's, you know, thoughts that are going on. And, and it, sometimes a phrase will really stick with me. And I feel very connected to the energy of that phrase at the same time. And so um, when I'm connected to the words, when they feel powerful to me, um, I will put them on the canvas. And they're actually on many, many of my canvases, but I used to hide them pretty religiously because they seemed a little, you know, I don't know, odd or something, right? Uh, and lately they've been showing up more and I've been letting them kind of be a little more exposed. So um, they've kind of become part of the work. And they were, when I look at them, like when I'm looking at these pieces, I'm reminded of them and how I felt when I painted them. So they definitely, the words have an energy about them and they're part of the energy of the piece, I think. And I also think they you make it interesting. I have a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about the words. So um, I think it is an interesting talking point. Uh, uh, and I, they now are appearing on in all the work that I do in, in some form or fashion. Um, so so they're there, they're there to stay. Uh, obviously you can see the reference to the wire in these pieces. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, things here that look like wire, I think. So, so it's, it's pretty easy to see how these things were inspired, but these are some of my favorite pieces and it, it has to do with just the way it feels to paint the wire and the way it feels to feel the energy of the wire, um, you know, the wire is very spontaneous and it has a mind of its own. And so trying to recreate that without trying is um, really, really something I enjoy and just trying to feel the energy. Um, there's been, uh, none of these pieces are this way, but there's been several pieces in the series where I did the old artist trick of like blindfolding myself and painting blindfolded just so I could try to recreate the spontaneity of the wire itself. Um, uh, you can you all hear me? There's a a mower down outside. You know you can hear me, right? Everybody can hear me. Okay, good, super. Um, so that's a little bit about my wire series. Uh, the wire and word study one and two are the newest pieces. Um, and they are uh, located at a gallery in Atlanta. And every, the other four pieces are sold. So, um, but all were at galleries as well. So, uh, let's go to. Uh, graffiti and words, since we talked a little bit about the words. So this little collection or grow, rather growing collection is really where I'm focused on the words. Um, and again, uh, you can see them. In some cases, they're very obvious what they are. In some cases, I write backwards. Um, a lot of times I, I'm right-handed, but a lot of times I write left-handed, uh, just attempting again to keep it more spontaneous and a little more art artistic in nature. But the words really are um, highlighted in these pieces more uh, than I've done in some of the other works. So that's why I decided that it was actually a series. You know, my work has sort of fallen naturally into these obvious series and words were a part of the series. So words were a part of wire, words were a part of concrete, words were a part of 
pavement. But I, I, as the words became more visible and exposed, they kind of took on a life of their own. So um, I've been grouping them together uh, where the words are really prominent, um, even though there's other there's other components, obviously, and other inspirations in the pieces as well. Um, some of these pieces are very new. Um, I think all the way at the bottom, if you uh, if you scroll to the bottom, um, on the right uh, is one that's that's brand new, uh, brand new meaning before I shut the studio down in the garage. So um, at least at least only about a month old, um, and so uh, that's where the work is kind of leaning right now. Um, it's a very textured piece, as you can see, and I. Again, uh, I'm enjoying more of the raw looking pieces like I showed you a few minutes ago, but sometimes I just can't stay raw and the um, gesso and the paint and the things that I'm laying down just demand that I have more texture and more layer. So I do that. Um, and, and that's how a piece like this gets created, which really is very thick uh, with texture and, and layers. Uh, okay, and then let's go to the shark's teeth. And all of the pieces that I've showed you up till now were mostly oil, um, but with obviously gesso, acrylic, um, pastel, other things that I made marks with. In this series uh, that I don't have on my website currently, um, but was really one of my favorite ever, um, and I'm going to do more of this as this new studio opens up. And um, in this series, what I did uh, was I created collage paper and out of um, a, a variety of different things, but I created collage papers, which I then collaged onto the work. And um, it really gave me some defined geometric shapes. And at first I didn't love it because it wasn't loose enough for me. I don't do a lot of really strong shapes, um, but, then I grew to love it and uh, it was very popular. This whole body of work uh, sold out very quickly, um, which is always validating in some way, right? That, that you've done something that's good. Um, I try not to put too much into that because everybody likes different things, but, but still it was validating. And I really enjoy the collage process because there's something unintuitive about it. Um, you lay down a piece of cut, paper or cut something and uh, it creates a shape, but it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of formed and geometric. Um, and I'm liking that. I like uh, working with that. It's, it's very opposed to the way I normally paint. And so the difference is very exciting to me. So these pieces were um, um, all inspired by some Megalodon shark's teeth that I have I, I wish that I could have showed them to you on the call today, but they're at the framer. I'm having them framed uh, for one of my uh, guest bedrooms, but they're they're large, they're four inches. And if you, if you haven't seen one, Google what they look like. Um, they're giant shark's teeth and they're filled with these beautiful browns and blacks and gray colors. And they have obviously a very strong presence. And so these collage pieces uh, came about from that inspiration and, um, uh, you can see it uh, in all of them. Some of my classic icon uh, iconography is here uh, in this piece, for example, these kind of um, swirly uh, shapes that I sometimes do with my marker. I call them bees, actually. Um, my bees are here. And uh, of course, the gray is oil paint and then um, collage below it. So there's an interesting mix. And I really enjoyed working with the different medium. Uh, media, and I'm going to definitely do some more of that uh, soon. Um, go ahead and flip through the couple more, Alan. Let's see. Yeah. So again, um, same sort of thing. My little bees and um, the shapes are all very similar. Yeah. And again, so if I ever tried to paint this black mark, I could never accomplish it. I don't paint that way. I can't paint a straight line, no matter what I would try to do. It would look rounded somehow, but the beauty of the collage is that I can get uh, an interesting geometric shape, which is really different. And so I've enjoyed doing that. Chris, I have a question. Sure. <clears throat> do you use text at all in this series of shark's teeth images? 
Um, there might have been some text in the very earliest layers, but it's completely covered up. It was not um, it was not a, a, a strong presence on these pieces, Alan. I, I won't say it didn't exist, but it wasn't a strong presence. The, the this these shark's teeth were so um their energy was so strong to me they're just so powerful i mean and when you think about a tooth that is you know five inches and that's just one tooth of you know thousands that were in this creature's mouth like like that's just an overwhelming experience to think about and so um uh, the presence of that and the energy of that was pretty powerful in these pieces as it was i didn't have a lot of words All right, um, so just a few more minutes and I'll talk some business stuff and then Ellen, I wanna get, allow you to get to the questions part. Um, all right, uh, so, and you can keep one of these up, keep up whatever you want. It's much better to look at than me actually. <laughs> are, are you gonna um, talk about works on paper? Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Thank you. All right. So um, this has been my work, uh, some of the work that I've done on paper. I um, early, early last year, I was really just um, using my brushes uh, and sort of eliminating extra paint that was on the palette on some paper on the floor. And I literally was not thinking about it. I was just brushing away and getting rid of the paint that was on the paintbrushes. And I realized um, once I was done or came back to the studio the next day that I had these really interesting marks that were appearing in sections of the paper. And I uh, decided that I really wanted to recreate that experience and be able to frame it as the pieces of paper that I had created weren't really adequate for doing that. But I, um, I, knew that I could recreate the experience just with a little bit of intention. And so um, I decided that I would create uh, some very loose marks that were really unplanned and uh, just with a couple of colors and see what formed from that. And uh, some of them are painted directly on the paper and some of them are cut from other pieces of paper and collaged onto the larger um, paper. And then I incorporated the words as well. Um, you can just barely see them here, but all of these pieces were inspired by the music that I was listening to. So, um, because I was really trying to just paint and not think about it, um, I was really into the music that I was listening to. And so I wrote the lyrics that were inspiring to me from those, from those pieces of music onto the pieces of paper. Um, I really, really enjoyed this process. In fact, it's uh, it's been so enjoyable to me that I um, really want to focus on on painting paper almost as much as painting canvas. And it's been pretty successful. People seem to really resonate with it. Um, it's sort of got a little bit of everything. It's got some ge geometric shaping. It's got some loose uh, paint and marks. And then it's got some words. So maybe it's sort of the best of both worlds. And it's, you know, sort of reasonable. A lot of people can enjoy it because it's 16 by 20. Uh, and I can enjoy it myself, actually, because it seems to move fast and um, fills me with a lot of good energy. I really enjoy doing them a lot. So um, that's been a fun process and a fun addition to my body of work. Uh, and I'm going to definitely keep that going and do more of that. All right, so let me just talk a few minutes about business and um, uh, just kind of tell you where I've been from and where I go. So, you know, um, obviously the business of art is uh, part of why I'm successful and I've been very fortunate uh, to be in business many years. So I understood a great deal about uh, what might be required to um, be a successful artist in the business world today. Um, and obviously it's the things we all know, you know, it's Instagram posting, it's, you know, um, figuring out contracts to work with galleries. It's all of those kinds of things. But, you know, um, I would say that it takes up about 30% of my time, really, and that that's required. You know, uh, you really have to spend some time 
uh, engaging in the relationships with the galleries that you want to be in. I'm, I'm today I'm in uh, six, I'm represented by six different galleries. Um, uh, the furthest west is Tulsa and Houston. And then um, the rest are here on the East Coast. I'd like, I don't have a gallery in Florida yet. I would like to be represented in Florida. And uh, my most successful gallery actually is Atlanta. I've been very, very successful there. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, the way I got into the gallery the very first time was hard. I, um, you know, I sent a lot of proposals. This was way years ago, 2012 or earlier, um, years ago. Um, I sent a lot of proposals. I did all the things that everybody does to try to get in galleries. And one day, um, a gallery from who had been following me on Instagram um, in Charlotte, the gallery no longer exists, but some of you may know it. It was Sozo Gallery in Charlotte, um, contacted me, the, the owner, um, uh, Hannah contacted me and said, you know, Chris, I'm really interested in your work. Would you, you know, be interested in talking with me? And I flew to Charlotte the next day because I knew it was going to be a really important moment. And I had been working so hard to try and get in a gallery and finally somebody was talking to me. Right. So, um, these days I don't send proposals out anymore. Uh, that's, I've been very fortunate. All of the galleries that I work with now either had heard about me from another gallery or seen my work and contacted me. And I and I'm I feel incredibly blessed to have that happen. I might have to send some proposals uh, or get known that way a little bit in Florida, just because it's an area where I live now, and um, I don't know the gal. I, I I've been to the galleries, but they don't know me as well. So I might have to go back to some of my roots in terms of getting into galleries. Uh, I love working with the galleries. You know, yeah, you give up 50% of your the value of the retail price of your work, but, you know, they have so much exposure to collectors that you otherwise uh, wouldn't have access to, I think. And I do also get a lot of direct inquiries from Instagram, um, but, uh, you know, working with the galleries is really great because they do all the hard work and I really just kind of have to paint and collect checks. And so... Um, I am grateful to pay them their 50%. And uh, uh, I've decided not to go the route of art fairs. Um, and I also don't currently sell publicly on my website. I certainly can take direct sales through my website, but I do that privately so that I don't interfere or make competition for my galleries because I really value uh, my relationships with them. So um, I let I, I, I try to stay exclusive to them only if I can. It's really it's it's important and and uh, I like to I like to honor that relationship that I have with them and it's been good to me to do that. Um, you know, I keep my pricing very consistent. Uh, my galleries respect that. Obviously, they they they're all professional and they understand that. And uh, I keep my pricing very consistent no matter what. I've raised it over the years, and you know, I'm very comfortable with where it is today. Um, uh, I charge a square. The way I price is by the square inch. So that it's always fair. If you tell me, you know, any any anybody who asks what the price is for a particular piece, all I have to do is say what size are you interested in, and the price is always the same. So that's great, and that kind of consistency makes it easy for collectors and galleries and me as well. So um, it's been a good practice for me, and I like that. I like working that way. Um, I stay pretty organized. I think one of the most important things that I do is I have an extensive catalog and file system of everything that I paint. Um, every painting has a number. Um, I keep uh, my files on my computer organized by that number, by the name, by the gallery. Um, I can search in any way, shape or form. I always take a lot of pictures. I have a good camera. I don't, I'm not very savvy with the iPhone. So I use a good old fashioned Nikon D750 and I uh, take pictures in my studio and, and photograph all my own work. and. Uh, you know, one of the biggest lessons I learned a long time ago was photograph, 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 you know, always photograph your work. You'll never regret being able to look at photographs from 20 years ago. And it's very valuable to the art process. I've found also to go back and look at older work and remember what it was that you liked about your older work and be able to to bring it into your newer work as well. So um, it has a it has a creative purpose as well. But being organized and and my file system and the way that um, and taking that side seriously makes a big difference in being able to give clients and galleries what they need so that I can spend more time painting because things are, things are organized. Um, yeah, I think, 
that's all I want to say about that. Um, I hope you guys will ask me some questions, so <laughs> that'll be easier for me. Um, Alan, I think I'm, I think I'm done talking randomly, so I'll turn it over to you for questions.